Hello learners, welcome to this video lesson. Today we are going to discuss another topic of your course. The title of this topic is Education During Modern Time, uh, particularly in post-independence period. As you know that uh, we are discussing uh, different topics that is included uh, in your course. Course code is BESC131 and course title is Education concept, nature and perspectives. Before starting our discussion, uh, let me to introduce myself. I Dr. Niradhar De, Associate Professor, School of Education, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Welcome you all to this video lesson. Uh, as you know that uh, presently we are in the fourth module of your course. Title of this module is Historical Developments of Education and Overview. In this module, you will find five different uh, important lessons are there. First lesson is education during ancient time. Second is education during medieval period. Third lesson is education during modern time that is particularly in pre-independence period. Then fourth is education during modern time uh, that is particularly in post-independence period. And the fifth lesson is recommendations of national education policy that is NEP 2020. Friends, already we have discussed the first three lessons that is education during ancient time, during medieval period and during modern time that is in pre-independence period. In this lesson, we are going to discuss education during modern time, particularly post-independence period. So friends, as you know, uh, the system of education, the development of education that we are practicing today, uh, it is not just the development of today. Rather, you can say this is a continuum of development. That means continuously the system of education uh, have been developing uh, starting from the, uh, uh, you can say ancient time, starting from the ancient system of education, the Gurukul system of education. So that is why chronologically you might have understanding that the educational system uh, and the process of teaching and learning process, uh, teaching and learning uh, system and the pedagogy that were being practiced during the ancient time and further the transformation of education that happened at the medieval period. Then uh, in the modern time, particularly both in pre-independence period and post-independence period and presently now we are at the stage of NEP 2020, National Education uh, Policy 2020. So that means being a student of education, being uh, you can say scholar of education, you are supposed to understand the very system of education of our country and how the system uh, you know has been developed starting from ancient time to this modern time. Uh, before starting our discussion, let me to focus upon some of the learning outcomes and uh, I am very much hopeful that after going through this lesson and after going through the part content that is given in this module of your course, uh, you will be able to acquaint yourself about developments of education during post independence period then further you will be able to describe the recommendations of different education commissions set up during post independence period and uh, you will be able to critically analyze the developments of education during the post independence period. So the three learning outcomes uh, that you are supposed to achieve that is first of all you have to acquaint yourself then you will be able to describe then further you will be able to critically analyze the developments of education during the post independence period. Now let us uh, go forward to understand that uh, what are the different uh, developments or major developments, major happenings that have been happened uh, carried out uh, in education during the post independence period uh, in India. First of all this lesson uh, will be focusing upon uh, the recommendations of University Education Commission 1948-49 as this is the first uh, education commission in independent India 
that the second is secondary education commission which is very much focused upon uh, the system and the development of secondary education in India. That was uh, you know this commission was set up in 1952 53. Then further the education commission 1964-66, the national policy on education 1968 this is called as the first national policy on education in independent India. Then further national policy on education 1986 that is called as NPE 1986. This is the second national policy on education in independent India. India. Then further revised national policy on education 1992. This is not an independent uh, you can say commission rather uh, this is the revised version of the national policy on education 1986. Then further the another development is five year plans. It was started in 1951 the first five year plan and these, these plans are for every five years. So it started from 1951 and it continues till 2015. So uh, uh, total 12 five year plans uh, you know uh, that has been established that has been developed in this country and they have given the recommendations. Uh, starting from 1951 to 2015 and in 2015 the recent development that is the establishment of Niti Aayog. Okay. So, Niti Aayog took the place of planning commission. So, you can say this is the transformation version of planning commission that is Niti Aayog. We will also discuss here. Then further education as fundamental right that is called as right to education act 2009. So, this is also another important development in independent India. Here education especially elementary education become a fundamental right of the children of this country. Okay. And further the recent development that I was talking earlier that is uh, national education policy NEP 2020. We will also go through the major recommendations, the major philosophy and, and the major uh, fundamental principles of the national education policy 2020. So friends lot of things we have to cover uh, uh, in a very short period of, uh, period of time in this video lesson. So I will just go through uh, the overviews of uh, a brief overview about uh, different commissions and different developments and I request all our learners uh, you should go through the learning materials which is provided to you and definitely I am sure that you will understand it. First of all now let us focus upon the University Education Commission 1948-49. As I have already said that this is the first education commission of independent India uh, that was in the name of University Education Commission uh, that was established or set up in 1948 and 49. University Edu uh, Education Commission 1948-49 was appointed under the chairmanship of Dr. Sarbapalli Radhakrishnan, the second president of India. Okay. And further, University Education Commission was popularly known as Radhakrishnan Commission as Dr. Sarbapalli Radhakrishnan was the chairperson of University Education Commission. If I will go through the major recommendation, uh, recommendations of University Education Commission, we find uh, these major points just like the recommendations are based upon maintenance of the high standards of teaching, research and examination especially in the universities and colleges under their control. So try to understand that how to maintain a quality higher education or a highest standard of teaching in higher education system and research in higher education system was one of the very important recommendations of of uh, University Education Commission 1948-49. Further, the other recommendations are just like courses of study in the universities uh, with special reference to the maintenance of a sound balance between the humanities and science. So, how to maintain humanities based disciplines or subjects and science based disciplines and subjects especially in the university system. Okay. So, that the students will be attracted, so that the students will be uh, motivated to study either in science stream or in humanity stream as per their own attitude, as per their own interest. Then further standards of uh, admission to university courses through entrance examination. So, it was the recommendation that there should be certain standard mechanism, quality mechanism 
for admitting the students special in the higher education system because at that time you must have uh, you know realized that uh, a few section of the society we are truly coming to get higher education okay and for the time and again this has also been realized that the number of students those who are coming to higher education system it got gradually uh, uh, in an increasing order so that's why to uh, select a group of learners a group of scholars those are really interested in higher education those are really want to contribute something in higher education system so that's why the standard uh, procedure or the standard accommodation was given that the admission will be taken uh, with uh, you know uh, entrance examination and further provision for advanced study in indian culture history literature languages philosophy and fine arts so these are the certain important area that uh, you can say talks about our culture our tradition our history our literature our language and our belief our philosophy and the art and culture that we follow so that's why university in the university education there should be the scope to promote such things so that's why it was another important recommendations of uh, university education commission further establishment of more universities it is not possible to cater the students or the increasing number of the students within the few established universities so that's why the commission recommended that more universities should be established in different region then qualification conditions of service and salary of teachers was also another important concern because unless the teachers are not satisfied then it is not possible to maintain quality in higher education system so that's why teachers should be well qualified conditions uh, conditions of service should be good and at the same time uh, salary of the teachers should be adequate so these were some of the important recommendation that was given by university education commission in 1948 49 and further in secondary education commission that was set up in 1950 to 53 uh, it was mostly focused upon uh, secondary education system the school education system of our country but but you will find that the recommendations are given uh, or it has touched upon the other areas of education because only talking about secondary education is not enough okay so that's why this has been properly related with the tertiary education system the higher education system dr a lakshman swami mudaliar vice chancellor of madras university was appointed as chairman of secondary education commission the commission was directed to suggest measures for reconstruction of secondary education with particular reference to its aims organization content and relationship with other levels of education as i was talking earlier only talking about secondary education is not enough rather uh, it should be properly uh, related with the other levels of education that means particularly in higher education technical and professional education system if i'll go through the major terms of reference of secondary education commission 1950 to 53 these things are focused just like the major terms of reference we are to enquire into and report on the exist on the existing position of secondary education in india in all its aspects then to propose measures for its reorganization and progress with particular reference to the aims organization and contents of secondary education its relationship to primary basic and higher education the interrelationships among different types of secondary education then further the other allied problems also so friends these are the certain important aspects important links that uh, that was a uh, terms of references that was addressed by the secondary education commission it talked uh, you can say the earlier education that needs for getting quality secondary education that is you can say basic education or the primary education and at the same time secondary education is also important for getting higher education tertiary education so that's why higher education system is also uh, a part uh, of recommendation in this commission 
then uh, the other terms of reference that we can say that arrangements of necessary fonts to implement the recommendations of the commission and adopt a planned and coordinated policy for the purpose of establishing standard in education. So friends many a time this has been observed that uh, uh, recommendations are good and properly or timely many recommendations that has not been implemented. Reason may be many, factors may be many, but the major factor is availability of fund. Okay. So that is why in this commission in the secondary education commission it was it was highlighted that you know uh, the government both central and state government will provide funds for proper implementation of the recommendations. Then now let us uh, uh, focus upon the another development that is education commission 1964-66. This is called as a full fledged commission this is not all about secondary commission or only university education commission rather uh, it, uh, it touches upon uh, education at all standards, education at all stages okay, starting from school education to higher education. The education commission 1964-66 was established under the chairmanship of Dr. D. S. Kothari which is popularly known as Kothari commission as Dr. D. S. Kothari was the uh, chairman of this uh, uh, you know, uh, commission. So that is why this commission is popularly known as Kothari commission. The main objective of this commission was to uh, access the whole educational system in India as I was talking earlier. This is not uh, a piecemeal education is not just like to, un uh, to understand education system in our country we should understand the entire system. So that is why the whole educational system was addressed by this national uh, by this education commission 1964-66. The report comprises recommendations of all aspects of education. It covers education at all stages from the pre-primary through the secondary and to the higher education system. The commission's recommendations covered different areas such as reforms in education, then reforms needed in education during a language policy, structure and quality in education, various aspects of school education including uh, achieving the universal retention. Friends at that time uh, it was the major concern of India that how to retain or how to increase enrollment. Okay, so or how to retain the students who are coming to the school system. Okay, so that is why it was a specific recommendation in this commission that how to achieve universal retention, 100 percent students how they will attend the school and they will complete uh, uh, you can say specially the school education. Then the commission highlights not only the present defects in the system at each level but also offers practical recommendations for eradicating them. Okay, so, what are the panacea or what are the uh, you can say solution of the problems that are being faced in different levels of education was also another recommendation. Now friends uh, let us focus upon the first uh, national policy on education. Okay. So, the national policy on education that was established in 1968 is called as the first national policy on education in independent India. Okay. NPE 1968 aimed to encourage national progress, a sense of common citizenship and culture and to strengthen national integration. So, these are the certain fundamental principle and philosophy behind for developing this first national policy on education in independent India. Then the national policy had given its recommendation on the following aspects. The major aspects of recommendations were free and compulsory education, then uh, status and uh, emoluments and uh, uh, education of teachers, then development of languages, then regional languages, implementation of three language formula. Now also we are implementing it, practicing it, the three language formula, then achieving equal educational opportunity as per the constitutional provision. So, these are the certain important area basing upon which the national policy on education 1968 has given uh, its suggestions and recommendations. Then further uh, let us focus upon another national policy on education that was set up established in 1986. 
National Policy and Education 1986 was the second national policy and education in independent India. First national policy and education was 1968 and second was 1986. In NPE or National Policy and Education 1986, emphasis of the policy was on the vocationalization of education like agriculture, rural development programs, communication and related other areas for the overall development of the economy. Okay, so that is why how to develop the skills and competencies, how to provide work to the hand of every learner, to the hand of every students of the country was another aim uh, and that is why it was focused to develop vocational education, skill based education that may be related to agriculture education, education related to rural development or by, through different rural development programs, then communication technology at the same time overall development areas of overall development for the uh, 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 overall uh, you can say uh, uh, economical development of this country. Then the policy also stressed the significance of open university system of education to expand faster the level of higher education. So, you know the concept of open university was come uh, to this country in 1986 uh, through this recommendation and uh, after that uh, you know uh, uh, the open universities in India just like IGNU that was established. Okay? So beforehand uh, you know uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh state open university uh, was also set up but uh, this commission uh, recommended formally that there is the need of open university in this country for, for providing educational opportunities to each and every uh, uh, you can say uh, citizens and every learners in this country. Then further developing skills to use the recent and modern technology uh, to that they can earn their livelihood without much suffering was also another important concern then to consider education as a continuum. Okay. So, uh, the concept of lifelong learning, the concept of uh, continuous education that means there is no end of education was also another important concern of this uh, uh, policy. Then to earn maximum benefits of uh, productive human resources of the country through education was also focused. Further, the revised national policy on education uh, that was uh, set up in 1992. So, this is not an independent uh, commission or the policy rather we can say that this is the revised national policy on education 1986. The national policy on education 1986 was modified in 1992 by the program of action that is called as POA program of action 1992 under the national policy on education. NPE 1986. The revised recommendations were implemented on certain aspects just like uh, maintain equity, social justice and education, early childhood care and education, adult and continuing education, education uh, and right to work. So, how to provide work to, uh, to each and every individual's hand was also another important concern in POA program of action of national uh, of, uh, of national police and education 1986 then higher education system providing higher education to the you can say interested learners then technical and management education at the same time development of resources of education different infrastructure and resources in education so that the learners feel free and get quality facilities in education then now let us focus upon the five year plans i have already touched upon that uh, total 12 five year plans uh, has been established in in our country in india starting from 1951 to 2015 okay further niti ayog came into existence in the year 2015 uh, to take over the functions performed by the planning commission earlier the five year plan was the function of the planning commission. So, now Niti Ayog has been taken the place of planning commission. So, in five year plans in every five year plan focused was on the development of education at all stages of education that means at the primary, secondary and university education system. So, what should be the priority area in primary education, 
in secondary education including senior secondary stage and in university education that was translated that was focused that was recommended and one implementation plan was also prepared by the five year plan in every five year plan then further every five year plan caters education planning and implementation in india in view of development of education happening globally and nationally five year plan also works for the effective implementation of the recommendations given by the education commissions at different time first of all its work was to cope indian education system at par with the global standard at par with the global development and at the same time the committees and commissions the educational committee and commissions that that the recommendations that they have given so how to implement those recommendations and to and and to ensure whether quality education uh, are being practiced in the in institutions or not okay so these were certain important work that was performed by planning commission through different five year plans it was start it was started from 1951 and it was continued till 2015 further now let us focus upon niti ayog 2015 i was talking earlier that niti ayog is the transformation version of the planning commission national institute for transforming india is the full form of niti ayog national institution for transforming india uh, popularly known as niti ayog was the modified form of planning commission formed uh, on 1st january 2015 and from that date niti ayog is functioning is working in our country niti ayog is the premier policy think tank of the government of india which provides both directional and policy inputs it, it it directs the government at the same time it also develops certain policies for development of education niti ayog follows the bottom to top approach not top to bottom approach starting from the grassroots level it understand that whether whether the development of whether the you can say the recommendations are implemented or not so that's why bottom to top approach uh, in which state can influence the decision of the center so here uh, state government are given adequate importance uh, uh, in niti ayog so that so that they can they can go through the recommendations they can go through the different developments and they can also suggest suggest uh, uh, for the uh, for particular development of their state the niti ayog consists of prime minister of india as the chairperson vice chairperson then chief executive officer ceo then permanent members ex officio and chief ministers and lieutenant governors and specially invitees who are the members of niti ayog now let us focus focus upon what are the functions that the niti ayog performs uh, first of all uh, its function is to evolve a shared vision of national development priorities uh, sectors and strategies with the active involvement of states in the light of national objectives then further to foster cooperative federalism through structured support initiatives and mechanisms with the states on a continuous basis reorganizing uh, that strong states make a strong nation then to develop mechanisms to formulate credible plans at the village level and aggregate these progressively at higher levels of government further to ensure on areas that are specifically referred to it that the interest of national security are incorporated in economic strategy and policy of the country then to pay special attention to the sections of our society that may be a risk Uh, of not benefiting adequately from economic progress further the other functions are to design strategic and long term policy frameworks for national development to create a knowledge innovation and entrepreneurship support system then to offer a platform for resolution of intersectoral and interdepartmental issues in order to accelerate the implementation of the development agenda then to maintain a state of the art resource center for
for overall developments in all sectors. Niti Aayog realizes that unless we have the resources, unless we have the infrastructure or the establishment of infrastructure, then it is not possible for the national development. It may be education, it may be economy and other types of development also. So that's why there is the need of state of, uh, state of the art resource center in the country. Then further, to actively monitor and evaluate the implementation of programs and initiatives and to focus on technology upgradation and capacity building for implementation of programs and initiatives are other major functions of the Niti Aayog. Further now let us uh, focus upon uh, you know, the recent development that is education as a fundamental right that is called as RTE Act 2009. The 86th constitutional amendment was made in 2002 and inserted Article 21A in the constitution of India to make education as a fundamental right, especially uh, at the elementary education system. That means uh, starting from class 1 to class 8 and, and its age appropriation is from class uh, you can say uh, age 6 to 14. The right to children to free and compulsory education or right to education RTE Act was enacted by the parliament of India in 2009 and came into effect on 1st April 2010. It provides the children the right of free and compulsory education in the age group of 6 to 14. It is the responsibility for the state governments and local bodies to ensure that every child gets education in a, uh, in a school in the neighborhood. India is the 139th country in the world having elementary education as the fundamental right for the children at the age group of 6 to 14. Further uh, uh, to include certain more aspect in a right to education act, we can say that the main aim of the act is to provide the opportunity of equality uh, education or equal education for all the children belonging to the age group of 6 to 14. The act makes provision for the children free and compulsory education in neighborhood schools till the completion of elementary education. Right to Education Act makes certain the compulsory admission, attendance and completion of elementary education for the children in the age group of 6 to 14. The act directly benefits the children who do not go to school at present and further for bringing community closure to school another function or the recommendation in RT Act 2009 is the school management committee that is called as SMC or the local bodies identify the out of school children aged above 6 and admit them in classes in, um, in classes appropriate to their age. So try to understand here there is a particular section in this, uh, in this act that uh, how to bring community closure to school system and, they have, and uh, the work of the community have also defined that the SMC or the community will develop the school development plan, then accordingly development of school uh, will happen. Friends, uh, uh, just to recapitulate, today we have discussed uh, you know, the development of education or the recommendations given by different uh, education commissions, especially uh, in modern education system that means in post independence period starting from University Education Commission 1948-49, we have discussed till, because, till education become a fundamental right that is we have discussed the right to education act 2009. Okay? And in our next lesson we will discuss about uh, you know, uh, uh, the recent development that is uh, NEP 2020, National Education Policy 2020. So before ending the session let me to focus upon certain uh, questions for your practice just like uh, after going through this video lesson and uh, content which is given in your module. I am hopeful that you will be able to answer these questions just like what are the different education commissions set up after independence in India, especially in, uh, uh, in the post independence period. Then uh, explain briefly the major recommendations given by different education commissions set up in India after independence. Then you will be able to discuss the functions of Niti Aayog as transformed for 
Planning Commission. Then what are the major accommodations given by the right to education act 2009 and uh, another question is uh, critically analyze the recommendations made by different education commissions set up after independence. So I am hopeful that uh, this lesson might have helped you to get the answer of these questions. Thank you.